Hello, welcome to Fanciful Spaces. My name is Hannah Rubenstahl. I am the card crafter here at Fanciful Spaces and the blogger at fancifulspaces.com. Um, if you saw another video, um, I've got two out. I've got one where in real time you watched me paint the background here with some Zig clear color real brush um, markers or pens. Not entirely sure what you call them. Um, <clears throat> There is the real-time one and then the sped-up version one, and I will link to them down below in the little linky blobber thing. Um, and so then today I thought I would go through and paint this squid uh, doing a slightly different technique. I'm actually going to put the, the pen tip to the paper in order to paint it, whereas before I applied pigment to a sheet of laminated paper and then used a paintbrush to use it. <clears throat> I have one of these. I know that these are really popular with a lot of people. Honestly, I never ever reach for it. I have no idea how old the water is inside this thing. Um, I just never reach for it. Maybe one of these days I'll start doing it. What I tend to use most are these two little brushes right here. Um, I said in the other video that I am not an expert in watercoloring. I don't know the difference of the two brushes. These are the two that I tend to grab the most out of what I have. They are the newest and the nicest. <clears throat> Also the smallest. Um, uh, most of my brushes are a little bit bigger. And I am super lazy, so I've never taken the tags off of them. So <clears throat> I will be using this. I've got some water, some uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker Pens. Who knows? And we're just going to go to town and have a little bit of fun. Um, probably going to start, I have mostly grays up here and some browns. wanted to do a gray brown thing since the water and the ink is so blue on this. Um, I have not figured out where my light source is. Usually when I do my stuff, my light source comes from here. Um, it's just the way that I was trained as a scenic artist in theater. Um, when you choose a light source and you stick with it, and my light source has just always been from there. Um, I do try a little challenge. I do try to challenge myself occasionally to change my light source. Um, and I do it and it works out okay, but it's, this is, that takes work. That takes thinking for me. Um, and at the moment I am trying to talk to you while crafting, which I've never done before. So I'm really trying not to think about too much stress here. So <clears throat> you could totally go in and lay in all of your color. I am trying to figure out what it is I will do here. Oh, um, forgot a cloth or whatever to wipe off um, excess water off my brush. I actually use an old t-shirt of my husband's <clears throat> that I was going to throw away because it was had seen better days. And so that is actually what I use. And the benefit of that is I just toss it in the washing machine every so often. I'm not throwing anything away. I'm not filling up the landfills. Um, I just toss it in when it gets a little bit dirty with the rest of our laundry. It doesn't take any up, up any space. <clears throat> and yeah, that's what I use. Um, let's see, I like that. Um, I'm still new to figuring these suckers out. Um, we're going to do some... Uh, I, I have owned these markers for ages, uh, and I never understood how to use it. See, I, I hope you can see the bleeding that is happening right here. Um, it is so neat. That's because the paper was a little bit wet over there. Um, previously, I failed at managing to use these markers, pens, whatever they are, because I was putting them on the paper when the paper was really wet. I mean, even just a little bit of moisture, these pens want to suck up as if they're thirsty. And um, that just was my downfall. And when I realized about applying them on the paper, on dry paper, life got a little bit better. Okay, so I'm not getting all of the coverage that I wanted to get out of that little guy. So, where are we? That's the blue gray. If you're wondering, I have the 40 pack, 48 pack of these guys. Um, I think there are up to 80 different colors. You can buy them individually. Um, don't ask me where. I'm assuming Amazon, um, possibly Simon Says Stamp, um, probably a bunch of other places. Um, 
I have seen them sold individually, I think at Simon Says Stamp, although do not quote me on that. Um, I do plan to add to this stretch. All right, I'm not quite getting as much blue, although we're getting close. I'm going to go ahead and be a disaster here is what I'm going to be. It was actually technically earlier today that I had filmed the background and I've edited those videos somewhat. There we go. Now I'm a little bit happier. Um, and I'm fortunate that my daughter is with her great grandma tonight. So I got a touch more painting or crafting out of the day than I thought we would. I'll go ahead with the light or this regular gray color right in here. That's why I wanted to push that blue gray out so much because I wanted this crevice to just pop a little bit more into darkness when I added it in. It does not take a lot of pigment um, here. You could barely stick your paintbrush in um, and get a, quite a bit of pigment out of your brush, ink, whatever, pen, marker, whatever it is. Let's see. I'm used to working much closer up to my face. I am not used to having so much space between me and my work. I'm trying to film for you and um, this is a new adventure for me. I might go in and add a little bit of brown after we're done with this. I don't want them to be too blue. I don't know. Maybe we do want it blue. There's a cute little snail here. I didn't even notice there was a snail on this stamp until I was painting the background. A funny story to tell you about snails. So my daughter has a fish tank. She's got a one and a half gallon fish tank that she earned last summer um, by doing a bunch of schoolwork and whatnot. And it got a little bit algerific little funky. So to help combat that, we got a snail. And oh my gosh, I love the pet snails. They're, they move a lot. They're super duper active. They're just a lot of fun to watch. Well, her first snail passed away. Um, we got an infection in the tank and we worked on cleaning it up. And the second snail that we got ended up giving us babies. And let me just tell you, you want to get those suckers out of your tank as quickly as possible. Friends had warned me about that, and I didn't necessarily listen to them. Okay, that's fine. Um, we were really enjoying watching them grow, and we were learning a lot from them. All of a sudden, we saw a lot more babies. Uh, we discovered snail eggs and what they look like. We have a ton of babies all over. We went through, tried to get as many out as we could. I mean, we saved the original four babies that we had. And then I realized that same day, the day that we saved them and got them out, and there were tons of egg areas, tons of baby snails everywhere. I thought I was gonna have to go through and do an entire clean out of the tank because these, I mean like, tons isn't even the word for it just massive amounts of snails everywhere. Um, so I was posting on my Facebook page about how frustrating this is because I'm trying to teach my daughter the value of a life, that life is precious and important while I'm killing all of these baby snails and feeling like a hypocrite. Um, but you know, the alternative isn't good. They'll ruin the tank if they're in there long um, and possibly kill her fish. So, and certainly kill each other, too, eventually. Um, so a friend of mine told me that there are such things called assassin snails, and they eat other snails that are smaller than them, except for baby assassin snails, apparently. So we are going to be going to the pet store very shortly and acquiring ourselves assassin snails um, to see. And let me just tell you, snails are the coolest creature. We learn so much having this fish tank in our house. I'm working farther away from me than I'm used to, so it's really hard for me um, 
to figure out exactly where everything is going. I usually work really up close. I mean, you'd probably think I was nearsighted. Um, I'm not. I'm, wait, you'd probably think I was farsighted. Um, I'm not. I am nearsighted. I do have glasses for distances. Um, it's just really difficult for me to see what's going on here. Okay. <clears throat> In theory, this side will dry, as, dry as, that, um, as dark as that side, but I want to go in and make this a little bit darker because remember, my light source is coming from here. Um, so I am going in with some dark gray on top of all the other grays, the blue gray, the gray, everything else that I put in. I'm just trying to darken that up. There may still be a little bit too much paint in there or water in there for that. I think we will sit on that and see how it goes. Get a little teeny little accident up here. Wiping away a little bit of paint that's splooshed. Super funny, the sentiment for the stamp is missing on my desk, but it's about being a little bit messy and coloring outside of the lines. <laughs> um, and here I am, I cannot relax enough. I just am focused so wholeheartedly on Oh, here it is, getting inside the lines. Art is about going outside the lines, and I have to have it all nice and neat. Um, I actually am going to use this. This is how I applied a lot of the paint to the background. Um, because I want to control, and I just want a light tint of brown here, um, is what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm liking the brown gray thing that's happening over here. Feels very steampunkish. Uh, if you're wondering, this stamp is from iBreak for Stamps. They have oh, an artist who makes a bunch of great fabulous um, images. My favorites are the steampunk inspired ones. I just think they are so different. Um, I really appreciate. I have a bunch of them. Um, I am on the design team for them, so I did get to choose the images that I wanted to work with. This is one of them. This is for their design team. Um, I just ridiculously love these little steampunk-like critters, these animal uh, mechanical critters. My daughter watches Animal Mechanicals. I think that's where I got that from. Um, these are super fabulous. If you look on my blog, there will be links on the blog for everything. Um, I will try to put a th link in the doodly doo thingamabobber for these guys, or at least for the website I break for stamps because they have um, over 4,000 images, both in digital format and in physical rubber, rubber stamp format. <clears throat> there is so much to choose from. I am just in awe of how much options and variety there are. Um, there is probably something for everybody out there. And by probably, I mean there's something for everybody out there at iBreak for Stamps. Um, and Della and everybody else who work there, they're so fabulous. So welcoming and so friendly. Um, just really supportive of the artists that um, that they follow, that they enjoy watching. Um, I really love being on their design team. Whoa, that's a monster amount of water there. Let's try to suck some of that up a little bit. There we go. So one of the cool things, if you add a massive amount of water, either on purpose or on accident, sometimes it can take some of that pigment away in that area, which could be a bad thing if you're working for a very smooth look. But um, if you are not, if you are open for whatever you get, it actually is quite fabulous. So this is the gray for the crevasses that I used over here. I did use a little bit here, but I also used the dark gray, I think it is, over there. Um, I am not going in with any other darkness because, again, my light source is here, and this is rounded up like this. So if the light source is here, it's going to be brighter here. Um, I, don't, I just want a little bit of darkness in that crevasse to help 
make give it the appearance of a curve or you know whatever shape this wants to be by the way I am filming this on Stamp Junkies second birthday it is so exciting if you are on Facebook I mean who isn't these days but I know that some aren't um, if you are on Facebook and you are a crafter, a stamper, um, a card maker, a scrapbooker, and you are not on Stamp Junkies, you need to search it because it is super fabulous. There are tons of giveaways happening there. The amount of inspiration and um, camaraderie behind everybody there, men and women, um, people share their children's works occasionally, you know, these young stampers that we're trying to raise. I have one. She has her own little stamp area here in this teeny tiny craft room. It is super duper fabulous. Um, I really love that group. There's a couple of Facebook groups that I really like. Um, Stamping Enablers is the other one. I really like that one. I'm having a brain fart as to what I'm doing here. Um, and where is the this one? This is where it's at. Um, yeah, it's just really, really great. Um, loving that it's Stamp Junkie's birthday. Um, Stamping Enablers is another great group. Um, a lot of people are in the same groups. Um, there's no right or wrong. There's just different rules behind the groups, and you have to, you know, abide by those rules if you want to be a member. But I highly suggest that you consider becoming a member if you are not. It's really great. Okay, so I got these. This area has a lot of little complicated doodads. These little gears are difficult to move around. So I am using my paintbrush. Also, um, this side is going to be a teeny bit darker than this one, hopefully. And I'm really trying hard to control that and failing at getting it darker. I'm just adding water to everything, apparently, here. So I'm stop that. I guess we're going to go in with this. Um, the inspiration behind my doing these videos is actually because in one of the groups, people were complaining that they didn't know how to use their Zig Real Brush markers, um, which is... Okay, so a little bit of camera jumping around and whatnot. Unfortunately, the limitations of my camera um, only allow me to, to do like 20 minute segments at most. I went on for about 20 minutes and um, then it just stops so then I have to record but anyway um, the point that I was talking about previously was why I decided to do this video this is a new format of videos from what I'm used to doing and I am trying to broaden my horizons but then one of the groups some people were complaining and talking about how they didn't know how to use their Zig Real Brush markers. Um, and boy, do I ever know that story because these sat on my desk for ages. Um, I just couldn't use them until very recently. So I thought, since I know exactly how you're feeling, I am going to go ahead and try. And I'm getting this way darker than I want it to be. Like, out of control darker here. Maybe when I turn it right side, it'll. It's all like outlined. This is not how I want it to look. Cleaning out my brush a little bit. Okay, we're going to let that sit for right now. I need to walk away from that area. Let's paint some tentacles. Why don't we? Um, squid. Most of this squid looks like it's kind of metallic, electronic. Um, and then specifically like these tentacle regions here. They're probably alive, right? That's what I'm thinking. Let's look for some greens. Green is telling me life. Um, I want to go in muted greens, though. I don't want to draw too much attention to them. 
what did I grab out? Uh, gray brown, probably not. Gray, green gray and mid gray. Those are so not green. Um, it's hard when you're storing them like this to be able to see exactly what it is they are. The colors on the ends are not necessarily indicative of what's going on. So I uh, pulled out these guys, olive green and mid green. We'll check them out. I don't know if you can see that right there. Those make me happy. Um, we will go to town while this is drying and before I get to anything and get some color in on these tentacles. Let's go with a slightly bigger brush, otherwise we will all be here all day long. Um, so I am new to YouTube. I am new to blogging. Um, trying to share my love of crafting with everybody and nobody yet has commented on any of my videos which is fine I mean nothing is better than trolls right um, I say this and I'll probably get a ton of trolls however I love to learn I love to see what other people are doing I watch a ton of YouTube videos if you have a video, I mean, a uh, blog or a YouTube channel, I would love for you to alert me to it. Um, preferably paper crafting because that is my interest. I tend not to follow stuff that isn't. Um, please feel free. Tips, suggestions that you have. Maybe I suck and you can help constructively tell me how to improve myself. I would love that. Um, feel free to leave me a message down below. Um, you can subscribe to, to me if you want, although, you know, I'm not going to push anyone to subscribe. Um, you can visit fancifulspaces.com. You can see um, there's a bunch of cards that I've created that don't have related videos to them. I'm also on Instagram, um, Fanciful Spaces, all one word. Um, Facebook, I have a Facebook page, Fanciful Spaces, um, you know. All spelled the way you would expect. No Z's for S's or anything like that. Um, mostly, I'm just trying to make small talk here as I'm trying to blend some colors out. There we go. So hard for me to try to get used to working or my f without the work right underneath my face. Actually, I'm going to use this paint up here. Go in this dippy area. Darken that. One card style I have yet to even completely try at all is really like the lots of layer style. I really need to try that out. It's not really my style, clearly. I like to spend hours painting things. Um, the layers, though, I really should try that a couple of times. Um, even if it's not my style, even if it's not your style, there's things to learn from the process of doing it. And as long as you're learning, it's still valuable, even if it's not to your aesthetic desires. There's still a value to that, and I really should check that out. All right, from here on, I am probably going to stop chatting with you. Um, if I stop chatting, I'm going to end up putting some music on. I will try to do a, a, a speedier version of what I'm doing, um, speed up the video for you. Am I using the right color? Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, so that you can watch the time lapse version and the real time version. I really have no problem spending hours on making a card. Um, sometimes cards go together super duper fast and sometimes they take me hours. And I am okay if this card takes me hours because I am doing what I enjoy. This is not a rush, this is not a game. Um, this is purely taking advantage of, I have free time and I have these resources at my fingertips and just enjoying myself while I'm doing this and that's all that matters um, at least it's something instructive to do to, with myself 
So that's why sometimes my videos take ages. Not videos, my cards. And sometimes they don't, like I said. I need to get some more contrast in there. Let's take, where is, um, try the gray brown. I'm trying to make this back tentacle look like it's further back from the other one a little bit. So, so far I have this and I'll smooth it out. I'm gonna use this brush here. bit of coloring outside the lines is happening. Try to embrace it. I don't know that I can do it. I just don't think I can do it. There we go. I just can't do it. There we go. So um, once it's dry, I'll actually lift it up and show you. The paper that I'm using today is uh, the Tim Holtz Distress Watercolor Paper. I tend to use this one and Arches. Um, I've never tried any of the less, lesser expensive Canson versions. Pretty much I said, Sandy Allnock, Allnock, what are you using? And I looked at her blog and I watched a bunch of her videos as well as some videos of other people. I don't personally know her, don't think I'm chummy with her. I adore her and I would like to be her, but unfortunately I don't actually know her. Um, I'm making myself sound a little bit more one-on-one -on -one friendly with her than I am. Um, but I checked out her blog and watched her videos and decided I didn't want to mess around with products that were subpar because they will give me subpar results. I will not necessarily be happy with the results and therefore I'm probably not going to learn the technique. And that was the big thing, is I wanted to learn the technique of what I was doing. Therefore, I was going to fork out the money for the product in order to get the results that I wanted. Um, and really, Arches isn't that... I, I know I say this from a privileged standpoint here. Arches is not that bad, though, if you use a Michaels coupon. Um, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. I'm sure there are less expensive locations for it online. Um, I know I was prepared for a f to spend a feisty amount when I went in to buy this. And with the coupon, I was pleasantly surprised with how, how n not terribly expensive it was. Okay, so here you can see this is dried out. You can see that I got it a little bit darker by adding some brown. And that's pretty much all I wanted to do with it. Um, it was a gray brown that I added just to make it look like it was a little further away than um, than its other sibling tentacle right in front. And I'm going to do the same with these guys. These guys are going to go a lot darker, um, generally speaking. It is so hard to paint this being so far away. I'm learning a lot by doing this. Gray green. Green gray, that's what it is.
so this is what I have so far. Just using water in these zig clean brush markers and um, another paintbrush. Ooh, I used the wrong green. That's okay. Because that's going to be dark anyway. I'm actually going to step away from this tentacle because I want to get the correct... Actually, we'll just work backward on it. There we go. By the time I got to that part, it was dry enough. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with this little guy. Where is that green gray? feel like maybe I need it a bit darker over here. Let's see. Do I have a dark green readily available? So many markers. Deep green. Teeny bit in here. I question my choice of green. Just green in general. <laughs> um, I don't know that anyone's ever heard of a green squid before. I guess there's always a first.
Still wish I could get that a little bit up over here. All right, uh, had to do some video moving over and whatnot. Um, I didn't really progress very far while you were gone. I just finished up that last little tentacle. And what I'm gonna be doing now is I am going to just paint very quietly uh, so that I can focus. I'm gonna add a little bit of music to the video. You're gonna watch or not watch, um, depending on what it is that you're interested in. Um, this frees me up to be able to think about what I'm doing. Um, put some Netflix on in the background. I don't paint in the quiet very well. And um, when I get to finishing up this little area, I will come back on and talk to you later. But as you can see, I was super afraid that this end would be too dark. And I think it's okay. Um, I may still fuss with it a little bit, but I think it's okay. So, with that in said, uh, I'm going to shush up now.
Atlantic's launch started 43421.9. In an effort to put an end to gather the rays, we have come to the Akama system to enlist the aid of Maruk, the sovereign Akama Group. The Marook has made this sector unsafe. They've ransacked our research facilities. Our trade routes have been disrupted. The gatherers are elusive. We've only managed to capture a handful of them. But with the staff needs help. Hunting them down. I'm sure the sovereign will wish to sample many of the cuisines your ship has to offer, but there are some ancillary additions that she will insist upon. I will arrange for a technician to help program your recipes in the computer, of course. I'll have to try some. What's your specialty? I have that. Good I can't tell you because I would come up with a few culinary delights. There is a spice harvest dish. Harvest? A green vegetable. Entering standard orbit of Gamma Verani 2, sir. Captain, I am detecting life reading from the planet's surface, as well as several small areas of thermal radiation and carbon dioxide emissions indicative of combustion. Campfire's data. Is that not what I said?
Speak privately with Sovereign Maru McCarthy. Everyone else, get out.
Glad to take you with us on the Enterprise. How many of your men do you want to accompany? I'll come along. If this is a trap, what is it? Come on. You'll be in charge while I'm done. If I'm not back in ten days, I'll... Demanded by I want something better for me, for my children. You have children? Yeah, two sons. One's just about your age. He's not any good at math.
been able to for a long time.
All right, I just had to do a video change there, um, get everything off of my SD card. I said I was going to come back when I did the final touches, and that's because um, I used some of this pearlescent white, pearlescent clear color from um, my Gansai Tambi, Tambi watercolor mix. Um, I mixed it with a touch of gray, and I hit these areas here just to add a little bit of sparkle to the card. Um, I had thought I was going to do the entire thing like that, and I didn't. So that surprised me when I did that. Um, what I'm going to do now is try to go through and get these center little divots going. I'm not going for perfect. Um, I am going to apply my colors the same way I did the background with a paintbrush and that is because um, I want consistency and I want to be able to um, be very much into in control of where my paint goes because I have spent so much time painting the rest of the card it would be quite a shame if um, somehow I messed up. Um, I honestly don't think anyone's going to notice if I get slightly off in my colors like I just did. Um, I think there is so much going on this card that I have a bit of freedom and a little bit of leeway to just, as long as it's not white, basically, I think is what I'm going for, is as long as it's not white. Um, hello, color on my brush. There we go. And then um, after this is done, I'm going to stamp over it one more time, and then I'm going to heat emboss my stamping. I just really like the look of it. Um, it really helps everything pop out. This is just me. This is how I work. Everybody is different. Um, I get a little bit more of this color in. So I hope if you've suffered through the entire video, it was a little bit lengthy and long. Um, I hope if you've been struggling with the um, Zig Clear Clean water brush markers, pens, whatever they are, um, I should maybe Google that and find out what they are called. Um, I hope that I've inspired you to try them. Definitely don't throw them away. Um, you'll be able to figure them out. If I could figure them out, trust me, you can figure them out. Um, it's not all that difficult once you figure out what your specific problem is, why they're not working for you, and figure out how to solve that. almost done here. You can tell with the pigment, like with most watercolor pigments, um, the stuff that's dried on my sheet, I can still come back and use hours, days later. Uh, it just reactivates with water. So I am not feeling like I'm in a hurry. I'm not worried about um, losing any of the pigment on my thing. Ooh, that was the wrong color to use there. Um, see, I just used a little thirsty brush and I got some of that color up. It'll still always be a little bit off, but like I said, nobody is going to notice that spot. If you have constructive criticisms as to how I can improve my videos, I would love to hear them. I am always up for learning and growing more as an artist and as a person. Um, so that is my invitation there. Um, I, if you like these sorts, if you don't like these sorts of videos, let me know. Um, if you do like these sorts of videos, let me know. Uh, I, I really like to work with Copic marker, Copic markers, excuse me. And I can see myself in the future doing similar videos with my Copic markers. Now with Copics, 
There is a lot of information out there. I'm probably just going to be another one of those silly people who think that they know what they're doing and posting a video. Um, however, every video has something to learn in it, and maybe I can contribute. Whoop. There's a few over here that are missing some color. Why are we not getting color? There we go. I'm gonna try to get some of that out of there. In a second, there we go. Little bit too much. There we go. There we go. Did they get their silver? They got their silver. Okay, um, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to bring out my Misty, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, I zoomed out so that you can see everything. Um, I am lining up, making sure that I get my stamp in in the right direction. Um, I just bought these Misty Corners. Um, the creative corners from Misty. I got them from Butterfly Reflections Inc. online. Um, Vanessa was lovely and super quick with her shipping. Um, and I just opened the box today, actually. Um, I am going to go ahead and use them primarily because um, I got to get it. I have this other stamp here that I'm waiting to use. I am going to use them primarily because it's watercolor paper, it's curled. Um, I just want to keep everything down, make sure everything goes where it's supposed to go. Uh, I used stays on ink there. I don't know which would be better, stays on or um, oops, the little covers on stays on or memento for this. Um, that's my naivete on card crafting um, showing. So I'm going to stick with stays on since that's what's already there might take a couple of applications here before I get the coverage that I want. This is the part that I like to mess up on. I always like to have everything in, something slips, and then I ruin all of my hard work. Um, if you want to know how I mess up, that's how. Um, there we go. I'm going to clean this up. Oh good, it's fixing his little eye there. His eye got the eye on the stamp has this adorable little dot on it, and it is not coming out on this textured watercolor paper, I don't think. Um, trying to clean up my stamp as best as I can. Um, hopefully, everything is in view and you see what's going on. Um, I found that a little elbow grease is all that I really need to get stays on. I have a little color still missing. Um, I'd like to hit that up, but what I'm going to do get out my embossing stuff get my area I'm just gonna move these misty magnets temporarily get my area all defunkified get my misty magnets back on there and see it's all good as I would say to my daughter, it's good, all good in the hood. Do another one here. There's so much detail on these rubber stamps from I Break for Stamps. And then, so this is some WOW embossing powder and clear gloss. And it's clear. Um, I'm still inspecting everything here to make sure I don't have embossing powder where I super don't want it. But it's not going to be the world's biggest deal if there is. Now going to heat my gun up.
we go. And now for the sentiment. I did a video on lining things up with rub uh, clear rubber stamps. Actually, I am messing up here. Let's do that. I'm stick this down. I'm going to try to line everything up. I so far, I'm loving the coverage of these like corner magnets. This is the sentiment that came with the stamp. Art is about going outside the lines. And do I want it crooked? Nah, I want it straight. Okay, we're going to see if we like that or not. So I'm going to pick that up. Regardless of whether I want to use stays on or memento for that, I am going to stamp it in memento on top of my acetate, my overhead projection paper. There's no ink on the paper. It's just on my acetate. It looks pretty, sh I'm gonna go with that. It looks pretty straight. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm gonna finish my card off exactly. Uh, what sort of decorative elements, edges, or anything like that I might add. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it stay close to my little squid guy. Um, I feel like we should call him Squidward. My daughter's huge into um, SpongeBob at the moment. And I am using some Memento Tuxedo Black because it was the first thing that I grabbed. And if I don't like it, I can go over with the stays on. Um, it'll take a couple of applications because I did the um, embossing. I'm gonna do the embossing on this too to help it stand out. Can I just say how much I love these stamps? These little steampunk-like stamps. I have done several of them. Um, I super love. All right, we're gonna go with that. Clean this off. So much easier to clean memento off. Um, get my little embossing buddy going on here. I really wanna get that little EK Excess powder tool one of these days. The problem with scrap uh, with crafting, there's always another thing to buy. And I mean, it doesn't even matter what crafting. I mean, if you're knitting, there's probably always yarn to buy or needles to buy. If you're, I don't know, a woodworker, there's probably wood to buy all the time. My father's a woodworker. He When he goes on vacation, sometimes he comes back with wood that he bought locally. Um, I could see here I missed getting some of that all nice and bright um, heated, so I'm going to make sure I hit that momentarily. All right. There is my finished card panel. It is not completely finished as a card though. It's just a panel. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it. But I hope you enjoyed watching a very lengthy video. This will also be in the fast forward version if you just want to see it. Let me just speed through everything. Um, 